Hello! Today we're going to review a demonstration for using a research database called Primary Search. And this tool is going to help us find some great authentic text that aligns with our new curriculum units. Let's take a look. The first thing we're going to do is get to know one of our units. The one I selected for our example today is a third grade unit. This is unit three for focusing on our central ideas around narratives, poetry, word relationships, and geographic understanding of our region and community. Before we start looking for great authentic text, it really helps us to understand what we want our students to know, understand, and be able to do. So let's take a look first at our big ideas. Within this unit, we're really focusing on the need to understand word relationships and word parts to determine meaning. We're going to be focusing on figurative language and descriptive language to enhance our writing. We're going to be looking at building our vocabulary to increase our accuracy and fluency for comprehension. And our focus for content in social studies is really around the migration and exploration and these implications which have shaped the development of a community or region, specifically with physical, cultural, industrial, and agricultural perspectives. When we take a look at our overarching understandings, in Unit 3, we're really hoping that students understand that there's a specific process, structure, and elements to narrative writing. We also want students to know that poetry has its own specific structure and elements that contribute to comprehension. We want them to understand that the past influences the present. And finally, Word relationships and word parts help us determine meaning. The essential questions that hook our inquiry into this content are as follows. How do readers and writers use different strategies to better understand and produce a variety of texts? And how has the past influenced the development and interactions in a community or region? When we take a look at the specific bits of knowledge, we see that we've also highlighted a number of key vocabulary and terms. I see things like chronological sequence and community, region, and migration. I also see our narrative components around character setting plot. I see that we'd like to spend some time focusing on folk tales and myths and fables. We want to be able to take a look at the structures around sequencing and summarizing but also the tools for writing that incorporate figurative language, point of view, descriptive language. So, after getting a look at what we want our students to know, understand, and be able to do, we want to take a look at stage three of our units to see how we'll know students know. As we support them in our lessons and our activities, we hope that by the end of the unit, students should be able to perform any of these three tasks independently. Let's take a look at the first one. After reading a variety of folk tales, fables, and myths and legends from Native Americans or other cultures, create your own written legend or folk tale explaining how something in nature came to be. Example task two. After reading stories about migration and exploration, write a first-person narrative about a day in the life of a character, real or imaginary, who impacted the region or community. Apply the concepts you learned in your readings. Finally, the third one. After researching people who migrated or explored in our region, design and create a visual representation of that person applying the information you learned, and place on a class timeline. Write a description of your person regarding how they impacted the region. Okay, I think that gives me a pretty good idea of what students need to know, understand, and be able to do, and how we're going to ask them to demonstrate their knowledge and understandings. So let's get to it. The first thing we need to do 
is go to our City of Leveland webpage. And we can do that by going to www.ci.loveland.co.us. And once we get there, we can go under Departments to Library. And I'm going to go straight to my Loveland Public Library account. Once we get to our Loveland Public Library account, we can go ahead and type in our names and then our library card number and hit submit. This will get you logged in to the system. After that, I go back to my Loveland Public Library account and I click on this button for databases. We're going to be using the EBSCO database. And once I get here, I'll click on EBSCO host. This is the English version of EBSCO. And you'll see within the EBSCO host, there are a number of wonderful databases that we can use anytime, anywhere, just because we are a patron of the Loveland Public Library. But the one that we're particularly interested in is one called Primary Search. Primary Search provides full text for more than 70 popular magazines for elementary school research. All full text articles included in the database are assigned a reading level indicator in Lexiles. So that is great for our task at hand. Let's go ahead and click on Primary Search. Once I get to Primary Search, I really like conducting an advanced search. An advanced search allows me to be very specific about what I'm looking for. I'm going to enter a few key search terms like migration and immigration or exploration. The other thing I like to do when I'm in the advanced is to think about the reading level of my students. I'm going to select for my group of students the Lexile range between 300 and 500. I'm going to hold the shift key down so I can also select 500, and 7, 500 to 700 as well as 650 to 850. Now why would I do that? I can go to the Lexile framework and under the Common Core, one of the things that I have learned is something about this called text complexity grade bands. Here we can take a look at a quick overview around the text complexity bands aligned with the Common Core. This middle column tells us what the old expectations were for reading levels. In grades 2-3, it went from 450 to 725. But now the Common Core has asked us to increase the rigor just a bit for our students, and the new range goes all the way up to 820. Notice the difference in 4th and 5th grade as well. On our Elementary Liaison Wikispace, you will have access to a tool that will help you take a look at the Lexiles for K-1. Don't worry, you're not left behind, it's just not posted here. So, taking a look at where I think third graders might be, I know that I might have some who need access to text less than second grade, and I know that 820 is probably the top of my range, but I'm going to go ahead and this will give me access all the way up to 850. If I really wanted to bump it up a notch, I could also activate 750 to 950. So once I have my search terms in and my Lexile selected, I will click search. And all of a sudden, I've got some hits. Right away, I see the title of this article, Many Routes and Regions. Hmm, this article presents information on family resettlements. It reports that during the 1800s, thousands of people traveled to Western countries in hopes of finding a better life on the American frontier. Well, that's our region. I'm going to take a look at this article. 
as it loads, I can get some more information. I see that this Lexile is 670. And right here, I see all the text. And look at this. This is Gertrude Apollonia. And when she was seven, our family left Holland for a better life in Minnesota. And Charles Spies. Have you ever seen a house like mine? It's a soddy. We didn't have many trees in Nebraska, so we used prairie, gas, prairie grass sod for building. This looks like a good piece of text that my students might really be interested in. It comes from the magazine Apple Seeds. It was printed in February 2005. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this piece of text I wish I had the color photos, but this doesn't have a full PDF available. I'm going to take that text. I'm going to edit, copy, and I'm going to paste that into a Word document. With a little bit of work, I could spiff this text up right away. It's going to add some spaces between the people. I can also add a few more paragraphs to help the readability because it looks like that paragraphing was not caught in the text. And There you go. I could probably also go online and get some pictures of things like a soddy, what that looks like, and maybe a picture of a roofless cabin. So I can do a lot with this text to make it look really great for my kids. This is a great find. I'm going to go back to primary search and see what else I can find. Here's the next one. Missing, have you seen these birds lately? Oh, migration. There's multiple meanings to that bird. Disappearing habitats, dealing with raccoons, squirrels, crows, cowbirds. This might be a great article, too, if I wanted students to think about not only do people migrate, but animals do, too. Here's another article on the Oregon Trail. This is about the talk of gold and fertile land for farming is what attracted many settlers to the Oregon Territory. That looks like, ooh, 820. This could be a real piece of challenging text that I might use with students, maybe for a piece of shared reading, maybe for some close reading activities. Here's another piece of text, Coming to America. This article presents information related to immigrants during the United States' first hundred years, how they came from Europe or Germany. It's got a 690 Lexile. And I also like this one because it, in addition just to having the HTML full text, it has a PDF full text. One of the things that's really nice about PDF, and once I get to this page, I'll just click on download the PDF. What's nice about having the PDF is it's actually going to give me a picture of the real article from this magazine. So it will include text features like subtitles and captions. It will also have pictures and lots of other great tools like timelines and graphs and other data sets. So anytime you can get your hands on a PDF, I really like to take a look at that content because I think um, it's just going to be great for our students. So you'll notice that this takes a little bit of time to download because PDF has uh, a larger file size than just the HTML content. So taking a look as this loads it will appear here, and it will also appear here once you have, have loaded it. 
I'm using Safari, so sometimes your web browser, if it doesn't appear here after you open it up, that's one of the reasons why I clicked right here. So coming to America, I got a great picture there, 1900s, uh, 1900s, and fantastic. Just like the other shorter piece of text, this one is a little bit longer. And this tells the story of Fanny, and there it is right there. I was 13 year old, and I had to carry a baby. We sailed from Germany. Here is an example of a personal narrative. Here's another one. And this example came from Sicily. Some good words to know. Migration, one of my key words. Awesome. Here's a timeline. You know, this text connected to the other text would really build some background knowledge around why people were coming to the America at this same time frame, why they were coming, and then why also many were traveling west. So this is a great article. On my Safari, this is what I click to save that PDF. You can see I have it right down here now. And as I'm pulling together my documents for my students, I'm going to put this in my file. So when we go back to EBSCO, we can take a look at all of our great documents and see if any others might be a good fit for us. Now, if someone has told me of something that they know about, like an actual title of the search, if I know of a title of an article, I can go back and use my just basic page and type that in as well. And here is some text. I was searching around earlier and here's the Great Migration again about animals. And here's a article on the Great Migration. I really think that this one would be great for our kids because this is talks about the phenomenon called the Great Migration, which happened in the United States around the same time people were moving to America. People were moving within America to the West, our region. Some 1.5 million African Americans living in southern United States migrated to the northern cities. This was right after the Civil War, and people were moving north for jobs. The Lexile here is 540, and this is a PDF full text as well. But I just kind of want to get an idea of what this looks like. And, oh, wow, this looks like it is a reader's theater. And I love reader's theater, so I think this would be a fantastic piece of text to use as well. So I could down, this is a reading it out loud, and it uses kind of a computer voice, which is always interesting. But I think I'm going to go ahead and download that full text, because I really think that this could be a fantastic blend to all the different types of texts I want to bring in for my students to really compare point of view. It could help them after researching people who migrated and explored a region. It's going to give them a diverse type of uh, background looking at folks. I think those articles I pulled down might really support example task two as well after reading stories about migration and exploration. Um, students would have some really good models to be able to write their own first-person narrative. Um, and then finally, creative writing task. I'm going to, in another podcast, show how we can find um, folk tales, fables, and myths from Native Americans and be able to find them just by going to Google.
So that's your next podcast. Thank you so much. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about EBSCO. I've certainly enjoyed having a conversation with you all. And here is that great migration piece. And I think that that's going to just be fantastic. Thank you so much.